Good morning, traders and investors. My name is Roger Scott, and I'm the senior strategist for WealthPress. It's Monday, October 17th, and boy, oh boy, oh boy, the market's going to open up in uh, less than two hours, in about an hour and uh, about an hour and a half or so. Let's see here. It's almost eight, about an hour and 40 minutes, to be exact with you. Now, as you can see here, the Dow is up pretty good, about 300 points. Definitely not random. NASDAQ is up about 150 and the S&P's meeting us in between. And by the way, if you guys are enjoying these videos, if you're liking these videos, subscribe to our WealthPress YouTube channel, like these videos, and most importantly, post comments and feedback. I wanna hear from you and I'll respond to you. So I was in Tampa visiting my daughter who's in uh, uh, University of Southern Florida where they've got bulls all over the campus. Anywhere you look, there's a bull. I loved it, I couldn't get enough of it. I got myself a... Uh, uh, University of Southern Florida dad hat, and uh, it's official now. <laughs> All right, let's talk a little bit about market action so you can understand how to trade this week and what to expect from the market. Now, most importantly, and I think this is going to take the biggest, um, the big, the biggest control of the movement this week is going to be earnings. Now, first of all, we're starting out kind of slow. If you want to call it slow, you got Bank of America today, you got Charles Schwab, Bank of Mellon, and here's the estimates. These are the numbers you want to write down and remember per share. If it's higher than this, usually they go higher. If it's lower than this, usually they go lower. Tuesday, that's tomorrow, we've got Netflix. That's going to be very, very important because they are trying to revamp their business by doing everything possible to get people to subscribe, including a model that now has advertisement. Now, it's kind of ironic because wasn't Netflix, the whole point about Netflix, not having, not having any advertisement, not having any, any commercials, right? Wasn't, there, wasn't that their original business model or we forget, right? Anyhow, I just thought that was kind of funny. So they're expecting uh, up 4.8% from a year ago and they're looking at $2.13 per share, which is down 33%. That's, that's Tuesday. On Wednesday, as you can see here, you've got a lot of big companies. You've got Lockheed Martin, you've got Signature Bank, you've got Goldman Sachs. I'm waiting for Goldman Sachs. Albertsons, very important. Commerce Banks, um, Johnson Johnson, J.B. Hunt, Intuitive Surgical, Interactive Brokers. This will be really important for forward-looking statements. You've got United Airlines, and again, earnings are right here. So all you have to do is write down this number. Now, what's the big deal on uh, on on Tuesday? Well, on Tuesday, the big deal is going to be Netflix. On Wednesday, uh, and these are other stocks that are reporting. And I wouldn't say Goldman Sachs is not a big deal, right? Or Lockheed Martin or JB. These are all big deals, but. I'm trying to give you the biggest one. Now, Wednesday, it's going to be Tesla Day. On average, they're looking at a dollar per share for third quarter, down 46%. But again, folks, remember, all of this is already priced into the stock. If, if we know this, if I'm telling you this, it's baked into the price. And again, we're seeing earnings outperform estimates that are really low, which is the same story as we saw last quarter, which may stabilize this market. Now, I only went down to Wednesday. Everything past Wednesday, like Thursday, Friday, and Monday of next week, I'll do as the week progresses. I figure, what do you need to keep your mind busy with stuff that's not relevant right now? So again, on Monday, Bank of that's today, Bank of Mellon, Bank of America, those are the big ones. Um, Tuesday, Netflix. Wednesday, a lot of, uh, Tuesday, a lot of different stocks other than Netflix. And then on Wednesday, you've got a lot of companies like IBM, Equifax, Comerica. I like this bank a lot. Uh, Abbott Labs, great company. I'll co I mean, you've got a lot of stuff, Procter Gamble's. But um, I think investors are going to be, travelers are going to be looking at Tesla because Tesla is such a big fang stock. Excuse me, and it has so much market cap. But again, the numbers are lower. But you, you could see here, and if you're interested in any of these, just write down these numbers and it'll give you the expectations. Now let's talk a little bit about global economy, then I'll talk about the calendar, and then I'll get into the nitty gritty for the week, okay? So, First of all, and I'll keep this small, it doesn't look like global economy is roiling the U.S. stock market as it was about three weeks ago, which is very positive. And I'm hoping the earnings are going to be slightly better than expected, and that'll give us some drive up. So investors keep their eye on a week-long Communist Party Congress in China. In Asia, the meeting of Chinese ruling Communist Party opened Sunday, and they're expected to reappoint Z as leader for the next five years. Oy vey. <laughs> That's uh, Japanese yen is nearly at a 32-year low for the yen against the dollar. 
and they're not raising their rates, which is kind of surprising. Jap Japan's industrial production for August showed moderate signs of improvement. Industrial production rose 3.4% uh, and 5.8% for previous year. That's really good. Back to the U.S., worries about inflation cooling in some parts of the economy around the world remain overall. Uh, a report last week showing U.S. consumer expectation for ex inflation was another signal that the Federal Reserve may keep aggressively raising interest rates, although that strategy raises the risk of a recession. And uh, it, it, it's time for them to start cooling things off a little bit. Wall Street expects three quarters of a point, and that's baked into the market. Now, as far as uh, federal data this week, the overriding theme this week is going to be the housing market. And, uh, it'll, and, and industrial production. It'll be very interesting to see. Industrial production is tomorrow at 9.15, shortly before the market opens. Then you've got housing starts. I'm expecting this number to cool off a little bit, it, it, and it would make sense. Then you've got existing home sales on um, Thursday. Let's see, we're right now heading into New Year's, so this number should actually be cooling off. Um, and this number should be cooling off. And again, that's priced into the market. Jobless claims is going to be a big one and industrial production. That's really b this week. Last week was a really big week for um, Fed data. This week is not. It's kind of muted. Beige book is coming out. But again, other than the Fed speakers and some housing data and industrial production, it's going to be a fairly calm week. The bond market appears to be curling a little bit or at least stabilizing. It's grossly oversold right now. I could tell you that that this asset is grossly oversold and diverging, and it looks like it's starting to bottom out, which is a good sign for U.S. stocks. Volatility, as I mentioned last week, appears to have peaked out right at these levels. So I'm expecting volatility to come down, and the put-to-call ratio still has more downside to go. It closed at 91, which is still in a, in a danger zone. So until we come out right here, I'm going to assume that there's going to be there's a lot more put buyers then call buyers now the nasdaq composite this is the number of stocks in the nasdaq uh trading above the 50-day moving average it looks like it bottomed okay um the the um let me let me go here this is the percentage of stocks trading over two dollars any stock trading over two dollars above the 200-day moving average and i would say this is probably the most broad-based tool you would look at right now because this is giving us a a, a telling us where we are in light of the 200-day moving average for any stock trading above $2 on the, on the exchange. It's an index. So the fact that we are low, look, this is COVID, this is 2008, this is 2011. We're really, really at nosebleed levels right here. And, and, and this is why I tell people, if you haven't sold off your good stocks yet, this is not a time to do it. We may go down a little more. We may have a little, little, but we're, we're really far down. Momentum levels are really, really far down, like really far down. Um, if you look at stock fetcher, the number of stocks making 20 day uh, breakouts versus 20 day breakdowns, it's 238. So there's definitely a sentiment to the downside, but it's not 500, it's not 700. So this means stocks are still randomly trading down, trying to find a bottom. This is not a major selling pressure to the downside. Now, I don't like to see 15 stocks to the upside and 238 to the downside, but 238 is not 700. So as far as I could tell, there's a lot better uh, form, formation of a bottom right now than there was a few weeks back. Another positive, very, very, very positive sign, and most people are like, why is this so good? But we're starting to see uh, non-fragmentation from the major indices. Energy, healthcare, consumer staples, they're in line with each other. Look, industrial, financial, basic materials, they're in line with each other. Consumer discretionary technology and communication services, finally, for the first time this year, they're in line with each other. Now, utilities are a little out of line, right? Real estate's a little out of line, but, but I'll take this. Look, these three are in line. And I told you, remember when consumer discretionary was all the way up here? I told you it was going to come down and it's going to be with their friends, and they are right now. And remember I told you energy, healthcare, consumer staples, when consumer staples was down here, I said it's going to come back up. It did. It did. Also, also, I want to point something out to you. About a month ago, I told you that this, when it was all green, is going to look like this. I gave you an example of a Great Dane, somebody walking a dog. This is the owner. This is the responsible owner. And this is the dog that runs off when it sees just about anything. So when these levels get below these levels, it's time to accumulate because this is the foundation. And it looks to me finally like these levels are below these levels. Look, 
9%, 14%, 18%, 27%, 12%, 11%, close enough, 22, 22, 3, 8, 1, 3, 4, 11, 0, 0, that's crazy, 0, 10. So on 80% of these, the stocks below the 50-day are now lower than 200-day. Remember, this is the foundation, and this is that wild dog running, and the dog runs around, but the the owner is the responsible party. So to me, it looks like markets are way, way overdone right now. Now, earnings are going to set the tone. I'll give you a full update of how we're doing on the broad uh, market later today. We just got started, so it's a little premature. But by the end of today, maybe if you're in my VIP session, I'll, I'll uh, talk a little bit about that and give you some updates. But if this quarter is anything like last quarter, we should be going up because earnings will be grossly undervalued. And so far, that's been the case. Also, global economy is not roiling the stock market like it did for the last month. So I'm hoping we're going to have a nice juicy rally and then we'll go from there. Folks, we're officially entering the meat of earnings season. And if there's one thing you really must know, it's that stocks usually make their biggest moves of the year each quarter during earnings. Now, most people miss out on getting in front of these moves because they don't know where the stock might go. Could be up, could be down, could be up, down big, right? I mean, it's true. But guess what? There's no reason to guess. By following what insiders, whales, are doing before the close, Lance Polito, oh, he's been hot. He's been able to score big gains again and again in these earnings plays. Just last quarter, he went 24 for 25 picking these big moves, each one for a gain of double digits or more. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Click on the link below and see for yourself exactly how he does it. You guys are going to love it, love it, love it. And I'll talk to you guys later. Remember, like the video, subscribe to the channel, post comments, and I'll give you feedback. Bye, guys. Have a great, great day.